Home Assistant 101. As the title indicates, this is an introduction level video. My purpose is to explain the basics of smart home control options and then talk a bit about Home Assistant, what it is and why you would want to use it. This is really about creating a smart home. Having a smart home means you have additional ways of controlling devices in your house. In a smart home, you can turn your lights on and off, change the temperature on your thermostat, lock or unlock doors, open and close curtains, and control pretty much any appliance by either pushing a button on your phone or using your voice, or ultimately by doing nothing. In the perfect smart home, all these things would happen automatically based on who's home, where people are in the house, what time it is, and other information from sensors and even cameras. If you don't have any smart devices in your home yet, you will soon. It's the way of the new world. One common problem faced by people who have started smartening up their homes is that each device comes with its own app. It kind of defeats the purpose of a smart home if you have to sort through a dozen different apps to control your fancy lights. To bring all your different smart devices together, you need a hub. The hub gives you one place to control all your various devices even if they are all made by different companies. More importantly, a smart home lets those devices interact with each other. So motion detected on your Brand X camera can turn on your lights made by Brand Y and close your Brand Z window shades. If you have a smart home, it's very smart to have a hub. When it comes to choosing a hub, you have a few conceptual choices to make. At this point in the evolution of the smart home, Pretty much every device you can buy works with or using her or him as your hub is probably the easiest way to bring all your smart devices together. If your device says works with Amazon Echo or Google Home, then after you set up the device with its own app, you add the skill for her or the app for him for that device. Both have apps for your phone that brings in any smart home device you've connected. And of course, you can control all those devices with your voice. To get smart devices to interact together, you make routines. So why would you not just use She Who Shall Not Be Named or Google Home as your hub? For one thing, every time you add a new device from a different manufacturer, you introduce another point of possible failure if their servers ever have an outage or if they go out of business. For many people, the biggest reason not to go this route is privacy. Every smart device that asks you to sign into their app is collecting data about you, who you are, where you are, when you're home, and even things like when you're asleep or awake. When you add your devices using her or him, they also get all that data. And they can put all the information from all those various devices together to figure out even more about you. Worst of all, if some villain ever gets access to your home network through one of those connected devices, they can get information about you to steal your identity or otherwise cause you serious grief in all kinds of fun ways. Now, if you aren't concerned about data leaks and you don't care about Google or Amazon or all these other device manufacturers having your data, then just go ahead and use her or him as your hub. Simply buy whatever devices you want and live long and prosper. Honestly, in all likelihood, you'll probably be fine. But if you want more privacy and more direct control of your smart home, then you want Home Assistant as your hub. Home Assistant is an open source, community developed smart home hub. It's free to download and use. The purpose of Home Assistant is to bring all your smart home devices together, but also to provide the option of keeping all your information private. When you buy a smart device, you won't see a label on the box that says works with Home Assistant yet. But as of today, Home Assistant includes over 1,200 different components. Most components represent a different device brand that can work with Home Assistant. You can kind of think of Home Assistant components as similar to her skills or his apps. If Home Assistant has a component for your device, then you set up that device using their app and add that device's component to Home Assistant then you can use Home Assistant to control that device. In that way, Home Assistant functions as a hub, 
but it doesn't stop the device manufacturer from getting data about you or how you're using their device. If you truly want to keep all your smart home workings private, then you'll need to not use the device manufacturer's app. That usually requires opening the device and changing the firmware on the device to one of the available alternatives that allow for local control. If you've watched my videos, you know that's one of my favorite things to do. To categorize these different levels of smart home control, I would say, first, using her or him as your hub is the easiest for a non-technical user. Using Home Assistant with the device apps and components is more technical and requires some curiosity or ability to edit configuration files and tinker with things. Using Home Assistant without device apps and local only control, meaning no information leaves your home network, is the most technical option since it requires editing configuration files, touching circuit boards, and maybe some soldering, but it provides maximum privacy. Now, before you dismiss the idea of the third option, I want to tell you that I am not an engineer. I just do this as a hobby. Not that long ago, I had never really messed with these kinds of things. But now, I'm pretty comfortable with config files, circuit board components, and even soldering. Also, it's quite fun and empowering to be able to take apart a device, figure out how it works, and bend it to my will. <laughs> All of that explains a bit about why you might want to use Home Assistant. Now let's talk about what Home Assistant can do. Home Assistant can be installed on a lot of different kinds of hardware. Many people start by using a Raspberry Pi. You can also use any old computer. If you really like Home Assistant, you'll probably grow out of the Raspberry Pi. But it's a good place to start because it's cheap. I'm not going to go through the installation process in this video. One M Tech has a good video on how to do that. If you already have some smart devices connected to your network, it's possible that Home Assistant will find them as soon as it starts up. If that's the case, you'll find those listed at the top of the integrations page. Click the configure button and it'll tell you what to do to finish linking those devices with Home Assistant. If your device isn't auto discovered, then the next place to look is on the components page. You can search by device brand or look at the categories and see if your branded device is listed there. If you find your device, there'll be a page that'll tell you how to connect it to Home Assistant. These setups require a little more work than if your device is auto-discovered and listed on the integrations page. Usually that means editing your Home Assistant configuration file. There are a few ways you can get access to your configuration file. All of them require to use what Home Assistant calls add-ons. You can find the available add-ons in the has.io menu, then add-on store. The add-ons that give you access to edit the configuration file are the Configurator, or Configurator Inator, Samba Share, and IDE. There are already videos by me and others that explain how to set those up and how to use them. But it's usually pretty simple. You choose your add-on, install it, read the instructions, change anything you might need to in the config box, then start it up. Of the file editing add-ons, my favorite's probably IDE, but if you're running Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi, IDE can be a little slow. For simplicity, the Configurator Inator is probably the best choice. You need a user and password, then click Save and Start. Click Refresh on the log to see if there are any errors. If it looks good, click Open Web UI. Put in the user and password you just used in the config box, and you're in. The Configurator opens into the config folder. To get into your configuration file, click the folder icon then look for configuration.yaml and click it. Once you're here, the instructions from your device's component page will tell you what you need to add or change. In Home Assistant, the configuration files use a language called YAML. There are headings for each different kind of device. When you list more than one device under a heading, you start with a dash. YAML is pretty picky about things like spacing and punctuation. When you've added your device, save the configuration. Then, if you're fairly confident you did it correctly, you can restart Home Assistant right here for the changes you made to take effect. If you're not as sure about what you changed in the configuration file, or just to be sure you didn't screw something up too badly, go to the Configuration page, then General, then check Config. If you get the green light, then you can restart Home Assistant with confidence. If you did something wrong, it will tell you where to find the mistake 
so you can fix it. When it comes back up, your new device will be on the front page. There are a lot of different kinds of devices you can add to Home Assistant. When you're first getting started, the most common will probably be lights and switches. But pretty soon, you'll want to include covers, which is Home Assistant speak for things like garage doors, blinds, and curtains. Uh, climate, which is what Home Assistant calls thermostats. Door and window sensors, motion sensors, doorbells, presence detection, alarm systems, locks, cameras, media players, remote controls, power monitoring, and pretty much anything else you can think of. The real magic of getting all these devices connected to Home Assistant happens when they start interacting with each other. There are three methods for getting your devices to interact in Home Assistant. Scenes, scripts, and automations. The easiest of these is scenes. A scene is a list of devices and the state you want them to be in. For example, you might want to make a scene called bedtime. And in your bedtime scene, you set the state to off for your bedroom light, living room light, and kitchen light. But your front porch light white noise machine, and ceiling fan, you set the state to on. When you activate a scene, it makes sure that all those devices are in the proper state according to what you set in the scene. You can find a list of all your devices and their current states on the states page. It's the one with this little symbol. If scenes are the easiest, then automations are the most common. An automation says, when this thing happens, make this other thing happen and it has a trigger, maybe some conditions, and some actions. The trigger is something that happens that gets the automation started. A lot of different things can serve as the trigger. A switch turning on or off, motion being detected, someone coming home or leaving the house, a sensor hitting a set temperature, the sun coming up or going down, the time of day, the weather, a button being pressed, or pretty much anything you can think of can be a trigger. When the trigger occurs, the automation checks the conditions. Conditions can also be all kinds of different things. The state of a certain device, the time of day, time of year, who's home, and on and on. If the conditions are not met, then the automation stops. For example, if you have an automation that turns off the porch light at 10 p.m. every night, but you set a condition that all family members must be home, if your teenager isn't home at 10 p.m., then the automation will stop and the porch light won't be turned off. If all the conditions are true, then the automation will move on to the actions. The actions are what you want to happen, like lights turning on or off, alarms sounding, cameras taking a picture and sending it to your phone, a text to speech message telling everyone it's time for dinner, and once again, pretty much anything you can think of can be an action. You can write automations in the configuration files using YAML, but when you're getting started, the easiest thing to do might be to use the automations editor. The more time you spend using Home Assistant, the better and more creative your automations will get. Automations are the main way that your devices will interact with each other. The last thing I want to talk about is how you interact with Home Assistant. For most things, you'll probably use the web interface. Recently, the developers of Home Assistant have added a nice way to customize the web interface. You can change which devices you see and how they're grouped together, and you can add themes to change the color layout as well. There are ways to show your devices laid out on a floor plan of your house and ways to create a touch screen interface. There's an app for iPhone, but no official app for Android. But there should be soon. Should. Should. In the meantime, you can just use the web interface on Android since it scales nicely for mobile devices. You can also interact with Home Assistant using your voice. You can use Amazon Echo or Google Home. The easiest way to use either of those with Home Assistant is through a service called Nabucasa. It costs $5 a month, but it supports the future development of Home Assistant, and for me, it's totally worth the price. Now, if you don't want to or can't pay for Nabucasa, you can still use both him or her. The setup is just a little more involved. There are also other voice command platforms you can use, like Snips and Mycroft. In our family, I'm pretty much the only one who uses the web interface. Everyone else uses voice control. So what's my final recommendation? Honestly, for many people, it's going to be just fine to use an Amazon Echo or Google Home as your smart home hub. Buy some devices, set them up, download the skills, and then just tell her or him what you want your devices to do. With routines or actions, you can get all those devices to interact together. But if you want maximum control 
and maximum privacy, and you don't mind, or maybe even enjoy, getting under the hood, Home Assistant is your best option. If you want to know more, you can join us on Discord and Facebook. I've done lots of videos about Home Assistant, and I do live streams every Sunday. And besides me, there are a lot of other great tutorials by these fellas, and the Home Assistant forums are a fantastic resource. So that's it. Home Assistant 101. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.